Hi guys, this is Steve with homebrewvideos.com. And now we're going to continue our discussion on the different types of fermenters that are out there for homebrewers to use. In the last video we talked about using plastic bucket fermenters. And today we're going to talk about using glass carboys and cover the pros and cons. So let's get going here. Pros. Glass is tough. It's hard. You know, it's going to last forever as long as you don't somehow accidentally break it. Glass won't scratch like plastic will and you know run the risk of getting infected or you know a spot where bacteria can hide. It's just glass is a tough tough material as long as it's not broken. Obviously it's clear. It's very easy to monitor your fermentation and see what's going on with your yeast because it's transparent. It's, it's easy to see. Glass, the surface of it is not as porous uh, as plastic so it doesn't stain very easily or you know, almost I've never had a carboy, a glass carboy stain but my bottling buckets and other fermenters I've used certainly do. Uh, glass is easier to clean. You know, it's easier just to, to scrub these clean than it is plastic where you really need to dig in there with a brush. Glass itself, too, just as a material, is not as gas permeable as plastic. That means not a lot of gas is exchanged from your beer to the outside air. Uh, but with plastic, it's more porous, so there is more gas permeability there. There's more going on. So what does this mean to you? The longer your beer needs to sit, the better it is to use glass. So if you're making, you know, a big 10% imperial stout or you're aging, you know, a saison with oak chips or something like that and you need to sit for a few months or you're making a lager at 35 degrees, you know, it needs to lager for four months. This is what you want to use because not a lot of air is exchanged through it. That's a lot better than plastic for that. Now there are a lot of cons though when it comes to glass carboys. First being that it's more expensive. These are about right in the middle of our price range here of the three types we're going to talk about. These cost about 30 bucks a piece. They're heavy. You know, they weigh, you know, probably 15, 12 to 15 pounds. And when you throw a five gallon batch of homebrew in there, it gets really pretty heavy. Uh, they're slippery, you know, when they're wet, they're really difficult to handle. Now they sell these handles, which you have to get. But even then, you know, you got to be real careful with it. You know, it's glass, and especially when it's full, five gallons of liquid, you know, if you bang it into something, you've got a disaster on your hands. So there's always that risk of it breaking, of it shattering and spilling everywhere. Now, glass doesn't like temperature change. So if you pour boiling hot liquid into here or extremely cold liquid into here, it could break the glass and just cause a disaster. Um, so that's just another con with using glass. And transporting beer out of this, you have to use a siphon. Now, again, we're going to show you guys how to use a siphon at homebrewvideos.com, but it basically they're just kind of a pain because to get the siphon started just right, your seal has to be perfect, and uh, getting the the siphon disinfected correctly is it sometimes can be a pain. You know, there's a lot a lot more risk of spoiling a batch of beer and getting some bacteria in there. And uh, the last part, last con, is that it's just difficult to take a sample. Uh, so during your fermentation, you know, you want to measure your specific gravity. You want to see how much work your yeast has done and, and determine how strong your beer is and determine if ferment, fermentation has stopped and your beer is ready to be bottled. Really difficult to get into this because of the small opening. You have to use what's called a beer thief or a wine thief and get in there and steal a little sample. And sometimes it can take quite a few times just to fill up your hydrometer just to take a measurement. So that's a pain in the butt. And you do have to get a special carboy brush to clean this, um, you know, which has a curved neck, and we'll show you that again in, in an upcoming video. But um, so it's a little bit of a pain to clean, but it's easier to clean than a plastic carboy, which we're going to talk about in the next video. So that pretty much sums it up for a discussion on glass carboys. Lots of pros, lots of cons. Personally, I only use glass when I know I have a real strong beer that needs to sit for a while, or I'm going to age it. Uh, you know, on some oak chips, or I'm going to make a lager that needs to sit for a few months. Otherwise, I pretty much stick exclusively to plastic carboys, which we're going to talk about in our next video. So remember, to learn more about homebrewing equipment and everything you need to get started with homebrewing, visit homebrewvideos.com, and be sure to sign up for a free newsletter. This is Steve with homebrewvideos.com. Thanks for watching.